Hello and welcome to the eighth episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'm really happy that we have the eighth episode here because I was thinking we are in the bug fixing period and so no one will, key, will add new features, but the developers uh, were adding new features and very cool new features since uh, our last video. And so I decided to make another one. The first thing I'd like to show you is the clamping separation. Thomas Dinges was introducing this and he separated the clamping value Formerly we only had one value there, the clamp value, and now we got a clamp direct and the clamp, clamp an indirect value. So we could uh, separate the clamp the different passes now. And let ju let's just look at it now. When we are clamping the direct light, that would be there's lamp here. That would be this light cone there then we could simply increase this one to say one and we are seeing that the direct is clamped but you're still seeing this light cone this uh, over brightened light cone there and if you'd like to uh, clamp this those values here then you would just increase this value see so we, we got a very fine control over what to clamp now. And I think that is really awesome in so many of our projects that would be, that would be so cool. And I'm very happy that we have it now. So thanks, Thomas. The next thing we got here is um, the F-curve noise modifier. And you already know that uh, modifier, but let me just switch, switch to it. So let's add a location keyframe here and a location keyframe there. And then uh, switch to the, to one of the curves here. And we are using the Z location curve now, adding a modifier and that will be the noise modifier. And normally when you add this noise modifier, then you wouldn't have this offset value. And with, with this value, you could offset this, um, this whole, whole curve. And so you could very easily apply several modifiers, several um, noise modifiers on all those on all those, um, oh damn it, IPO curves, and then um, simply offset it so it gets more variation. And that is really cool and very helpful for um, delaying some animation and making make the animation less similar. So that was a really cool addition too. Another really helpful thing is that Sergei uh, was rewriting the boolean um, operations so he's using the so uh, just to clarify it we're using the carve library beneath all our boolean to to uh, make all our boolean operations and normally we were doing it like uh, tessellate all the polygons and um, then operating with the uh, carve library on it and then um, loading it back to Blender. But that was uh, converting a lot. And so Sergey rewrote that to, um, to supply the original mesh data to the uh, library, to the carve library, and then let carve do their work and then uh, just just uh, taking it back, in, back into Blender, so we should have much more uh, stable uh, Boolean operations and better looking Boolean operations afterwards. So to test that, you could very easily just take one um, one UV sphere and use this 
with the boolean modifier now. Let's take sphere and intersect. And then let's hide the sphere. And then you'll see that those faces are pretty, pretty nice now. Very easy and very accurate. So you shouldn't have th those many, uh, those many flickering that you experience some sometimes, and that should be much better than before. So difference in union uh, is the same. Just use it and you'll see the difference. The next cool thing was an addition from Precht, our main cycles developer. He added some um, something for all of you that are uh, playing with the uh, volumetrics a lot. And that is the volume sampling, um, this option here, the volume sam sampling homogeneous uh, setting. Uh, normally, we only have distance to choose but since recent builds we we uh, have equiangular too and what this that what does uh, that does is visible in this rendering here let us just inspect the scene there is a simple spot lamp here we have um, a volume scatter node in our world let me just show you this there is a background, a simple background. There is a volume scattering node connected to the volume shader input here in the vol vo world output. And um, apart from that, that is very simple. Just a diffuse BSDF, a spot lamp here. And then I rendered it uh, the first time with the distance setting here and the second time with the equiangular setting. And those were the results. Just look at the times there. Two uh, minutes and 13 seconds for the equiangular, the new option. That is a bit longer than the distance option, but look at the image quality. This image has been rendered with this setting and this image has been rendered with the distance setting. It is a bit uh, a bit faster though, but the uh, ima the image quality is much better with the equiangular uh, setting. So just use it if you got some world with a uh, volume uh, volume material on it, then just use equiangular or at least test it once. Apart from that, uh, I think Precht or Local added um, a patch that is making the hair uh, code 6.5% faster than in uh, the previous versions. So I think we got at this moment a speed increase overall from the last version, the 2.69 to the current version, f uh, I think we are at uh, 25 or 30 percent less render time. So that is really, really um, much. And um, when I read the, the documentation about the Gooseberry project right, then Precht is preparing some cool optimization um, sprint and this will optimize the render uh, speed even more and I will create a website for that so you could keep track of all the speed increases that were, uh, that are happening in Blender. So I think it will be ready in three weeks or so and then we could track down all the speed improvements that we got in Blender. After all this volumetric stuff let's come to the last thing. The last thing is uh, some new feature in the cloth simulation and that 
is to have some sewing seams. For that I prepared some very simple seam. Let me delete this lamp, we don't need that. Here is our uh, sphere from the last example. And this one is a fairly basic uh, cloth simulation. Just a plane with uh, a fairly high subdivision. Then some uh, edges, four edges on this side, three edges on this side, and three edges on this side. And what we are doing now is we are selecting those edges, all those edges, and then we are assigning this to a group. I prepared one group and I named it sewing. And when we are activating the cloth, um, cloth um, simulation now on this thing and the collision, uh, collision physics now for this thing, then we could define that those edges are sewing edges. So sewing, uh, uh, so, so to say they, they are, um, pulling this thing and this thing together so that both uh, cloth pieces are sewed together. And you define that by just clicking activating cloth sewing springs, then supplying this vertex group that you were um, adding here and then giving a force. This force is very easy to explain. Let us just keep this on zero and start the simulation and you see, okay, there is nothing happening. Just simulating, but nothing happening. See, when we are increasing this force, then those edges are more or less pulled together. So you see now it's pulling this clo those cloth pieces together. And when we are increasing it even more, for example, to three, then you see, okay, it's a bit like sewing it. And with this simulation, you could very easily, if you are not only uh, having those, those edges on there, but but on on this side too, then you could very easily sew those cloth pieces together. So let's just do this quickly by defining some more edges that are sewed. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And let's add those to the um, to the edge to the vertex group two by selecting all then control and G assign to active group and restart the simulation and then you see okay this is really a bit like um, sewing those pieces together So that was this feature. And although I have said that this is the last feature, I still got one for you. And for that, I'd like to uh, have the whole space here because we are going for tabs again. And let's just delete that and select the sculpt mode. And then you'll already see that we got now sculpting um, sculpting tabs too. So let me increase those to make them more easily visible. We got the tools tab here, the options tab and the crease pencil tab. So it's much less clicking already. And some, some descrollification commits from Sebastian too. 
like this one, the angle that is right beneath the user, or the rake or the random, this value is now in the same line. So we are constantly improving those interfaces. And it's already much clearer to do all those stuff. The same goes for all other painting modes like the um, the texture or the weight paint mode. We got no tabs there too. And we try to optimize it even further in the next release. But now I think that is enough because we are very close to the release. We have to uh, looking forward to um, iron out all those bugs that are currently present in it. And so uh, I think that this will be the last thing that we added tabs wise before the release. So that was all. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. We're very happy about everyone who adds us on Twitter, on Google Plus or on Vimeo. Please share this episode so everyone can know about these new features and learn a bit. And I hope to see you next time. Till now, keep on blending. Bye.